All right, so we do have an update on the Cleveland Browns renovation. If you guys remember back in April, it was announced the Browns were planning a $1 billion stadium rebuild. And supposedly the Browns were going to give details on what the renovation and or rebuild would be. Unfortunately, we never got those. Instead, it was mainly focused on Jacksonville. The Jaguars coming out with a $1.4 billion rebuild with official renderings. And the Browns project has been completely silent. It is known as kind of a lakefront development project with a big land bridge Again, the rumor was around a billion dollars. Jimmy Haslam speaking yesterday saying, we're not leaving Northeast Ohio. You could take that a few different ways. You know, obviously the Browns are not moving, but the thought is if the Browns are doing a stadium rebuild similar to what Jacksonville is doing, they would have to leave their stadium for two years because the stadium would be in the process of being rebuilt. Where would the Browns go? That's where people started to kind of wonder, would they go to Columbus and play at Ohio Stadium? Would they go to Canton and play there where the Hall of Fame game is every year? Or would they even maybe play at Progressive Field, still in Cleveland, Ohio? Some interesting choices. I think there's no way that happens. This was a quote from Haslam. The only thing DNI would say for sure is that we're not leaving Northeast Ohio That is for sure. Our preference is to be on the lakefront, but we've got to see how things play out and it will be fluid and there will be bumps in the road. So these are interesting quotes and this signals to me that maybe the stadium rebuild is not 100%. There was a rumor back in February that the Browns were going to scrap the rebuild and go with a brand new stadium. It would still very likely be downtown in Cleveland, Ohio, but in a different area. Those plans seemingly got shut down, and it seemed like they were full-fledged going with a $1 billion rebuild without a roof, which has been another thing to where people are arguing, it's Cleveland, Ohio, everyone's getting a roof, you could have a lot more events, it's freezing cold, the Browns had a game late in the season last year, it was just laughably cold, I mean it didn't help that the team was already out of the playoffs, but there were just so many empty seats. Haslam later said, we're really working hard with the city and the county and the state to work out a plan to continue to develop and remodel our stadium on the lakefront. That was Haslam's wife, Dee. So we're working through it. I mean, it's really complex, really hard, a lot of details. We look forward to continuing our conversations with the city on how we develop the lakefront. We think we're an integral part of the lakefront, really important. And then later saying, number one, we want to continue to have conversations about how we remodel the stadium and stay vibrant on the lakefront. We think it's really critical for the community. These are really big, complex projects, and they're going to be a private-public partnership in terms of money. So it seems like, you know, there's been this push by a lot of people now that we're kind of in 2023 and people see how the finances work, you you really want the billionaire owners paying fully for these stadiums because it does drive up the cost of the team. It makes the team more attractive and more valuable. It would seemingly only be fair, but it does look like this will be a private and public partnership in terms of funding with, I would assume, the majority of the money coming via Haslam. He paid for Lower.com Field in Columbus, Ohio. He paid most of that, I believe, in private money, but it would also be, in part, public money as well, which really complicates the process now. When it comes to what the Browns really want to do, you can see right now they are not utilizing the lakefront right next to the stadium at all. That is the exact same site where Cleveland Municipal Stadium Stadium was. And if you're wondering why it's so underutilized, I think it's a number of factors, but the biggest one, if you remember when the Browns built their new stadium, it was partly rushed, and that is kind of a reason why it is not developed at all. The the stadium location makes for a very nice potential lakefront area, but we'll see if they actually do utilize and, and build it up. It does get really pricey if the renderings with the land bridge and with with the entire inlet area, the lakefront area, if they go with that, you're talking about that would cost at least half a billion dollars, probably upwards of a billion dollars just to redevelop that. And then on top of that, there would have to be improvements to the stadium. I don't think Cleveland Brown Stadium is that bad. 
I think the renovation that they got back in 2014, I believe is when it was, with both of the bleacher end zone seating areas getting renovated, that was a great renovation. It was very underrated. It really modernized the stadium. Yes, you could argue the stadium is a little bit boring, but let's be honest, there are a lot of boring stadiums in the NFL, and I do like that the Browns have those bright orange seats. It just gives the stadium more character. You could make an argument if they wanted to keep it outdoors, would you consider going the Buffalo Bills route? Because the Bills had a number of different options. They could have added a retractable roof. That, that I think, was a choice that they had or they could have done the let's protect the fans from the elements to a degree, add an overhang, but keep it, you know, this is New York, this is cold, this is our identity, we're a cold weather team. That's what they decided to go with, and there's kind of an overhang. I wonder if the Browns, in terms of a renovation, would consider adding some type of overhang to their stadium rather than going with a retractable roof. Because if they added a roof to their current stadium, you're you're looking at an extra half a billion dollars, and the lakefront development, I, I mean, this is like a $2 billion project if they add some type of roof with the lakefront development. So it's looking like there's a number of options, but I think the big story with Haslam speaking yesterday was they're not ruling out a new stadium because originally it seemed like it was a new stadium versus a renovation. And then it was like, oh, they kind of scrapped the new stadium. They're going to be announcing the renovation. That was in April. The announcement never came. So it still does look like the Browns might be going with a straight up new stadium, but they need to find land to build it, or would they just build it on the same area and then play somewhere else? And that's where the whole idea of Haslam saying we're not leaving Northeast Ohio, nobody thought you were leaving. The idea is you might have to leave just for two seasons temporarily. It's the same thing that Jacksonville would have to do if you are rebuilding a stadium on the same property. You know, there would be no place to play. Would you play at Progressive Field? Is there really any other stadiums in Cleveland that you could play at? Would you have to go to Lakewood? Would you have to go to Independence? You know, or would you have to go all the way down to Columbus, which I don't think is going to happen. These comments by Haslam, I believe, rule that out. If that's what he's talking about, uh, you wouldn't go down to Canton. You wouldn't go down to Columbus. There would be some type of solution to where the Browns would temporarily play somewhere in and around Northeast Ohio. They would find a temporary home for two years while the entire lakefront area is getting rebuilt. The renderings that I showed, those were those are not new renderings, but I hadn't shown all of them so I wanted to just show every single one of them. Those were the original thing where this has been in the works for well over a year now. And then you do have kind of an interesting looking retractable roof. This was an early 2000s idea, I believe, because I saw this article and it said the retractable roof would cost $90 million. There is zero chance a retractable roof is that cheap. It would just be significantly more. But that's a very strange, almost parasail type retractable roof. And that is Brown Stadium. You can see that is before the bleachers got their very nice renovation because there still is those extra rows of seats on that. But I do think the lakefront development, if they are staying put, it is obviously necessary and a lot of fans, believe it or not, you know, you think Cleveland, Ohio, they're tough. They want the cold. I'll be honest, a lot of fans want a roof. <laughs> they want climate controlled. So we will see what they end up doing with that. Will it be some type of compromise to where they will put some type of awning over, you know, it, make an extended awning to where it covers like 80% of the fans but still keeps the field open to elements that could be something that they do I saw that the Bills are utilizing different technologies to try and trap the heat inside the stadium to a degree which would kind of warm up the lower bowls and kind of the seating area that would make sense the Browns would probably install something like that you want to have the best of both worlds and you really don't want you know, what the problem is when you install any type of roof, it's going to block out undoubtedly a lot 
of natural light from the field. Even if it's translucent, it just looks different. And that's something the Browns probably do not want. And this, the price for this would just be crazy because this is not like a Jacksonville situation. The Jaguars going with the translucent roof, it's around $2 billion total. The renovation's $1.4, but if you add everything together, it's $2 billion. If the Browns go and really focus on the lakefront, that is so much money just redeveloping that entire area. And then on top of that, you want to add a roof. I think that would be very expensive. That's why I don't see that as a viable option. Right now, I think it would be a lakefront redevelopment plan, and then they would kind of fix the stadium to a degree. They would spend a few hundred million dollars on it. They would make it more modern, or they would just straight up build a new stadium and go all in and say, we're here for the next 60 years. Or technically, they could still move to a different part of Cleveland, but I do know that what Haslam was looking to do that, he was really struggling to find a legitimate place to go in and around the city. So guys, that is the current update. Looks like the Browns are not ruling out a new stadium, but the plan still is to move forward with the lakefront redevelopment project that will, uh, in my opinion, be well over a billion dollars. The initial estimate was a billion dollars, but if it's a lakefront redevelopment project and it's a new you know, designed to the stadium or at least some type of rebuild. It's going to be very, very costly. And I'm guessing Haslam, based on his prior uh, stadium finance situation, he'll probably finance about 60 to 70 percent of it. And then it'll be a public versus private battle. I'm sure there'll be a lot of people saying the Browns don't need a new stadium. This is ridiculous. This is just kind of what happens with these things. They get really messy when it comes down to how much the, should the public be paying for a stadium. A lot of people believe they shouldn't pay anything because, you know, the team does increase in value and become more attractive when they get a new stadium. So either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.